Altimeter data confirmed. The excitement from these NASA scientists and engineers was clear as they made space flight history. These still images from Mars show Ingenuity, the first helicopter ever to fly on another planet. And then came the video. It's grounded at first and then shows us hovering our three meters above the Martian surface and then touching back down. It's amazing, brilliant. We know that our time can make a difference. At Jezero Crater, Mars is not yet over. This is just the first great flight. Congratulations. Take that moment and then after that, let's get back to work and more flights. Congratulations. <laughs> Ingenuity took off from the dusty red surface of Mars's Jezera crater early on Monday. But the data took several hours to reach Earth. A milestone for spaceflight that NASA scientists compared to the first flight on Earth by the Wright brothers in 1903. Technology demonstrations are really important for all of us. You know, it's really taking a tool that we haven't been able to use and put it in the box of tools that is available for all of our missions going forward at Mars. If we really want to explore the red planet, explore possibility of past life, present um, microbes and things like that under different um, conditions on the Martian surface, we're going to need to be able to travel greater distances, which a helicopter like this would absolutely allow in the future. Flying a helicopter or drone is a seemingly simple task on Earth, but engineers aren't used to flying them on Mars. The flight can be affected by many things. The Martian atmosphere is very thin, and so it's more difficult for the helicopter's 1.2 meter rotary blades to lift itself up. In its test flight on Earth, scientists had to create conditions similar to Mars. The Ingenuity weighs 1.8 kilograms on Earth, but only 0.68 kilograms on Mars. Its batteries can also be affected by temperature. On Mars, that's an average of minus 53 degrees Celsius. Ingenuity isn't alone. It hitched a ride to the red planet on NASA's Perseverance rover, which touched down in February and will soon begin to explore the Mars surface. Ingenuity is expected to conduct more flight tests with the hope that one day it can travel further as part of NASA's quest to find any signs of life on Mars. Laura Burden Manley, Al Jazeera. Well, for more on this, we can bring in Luai El Basuni. He's a power electronics lead engineer who worked on the Ingenuity Mars helicopter team with NASA JPL, and he joins us via Skype from Los Angeles. Great to have you with us, and congratulations on a successful flight. I could see your huge smile as you were watching the celebrations there in Laura's <laughs> report. Yes, I mean, thank you, thank you. I mean, it's a really exciting time. I mean, I cannot uh, express my feelings. I mean, since early... I mean, been up really early in the morning watching the feed live from Mars, and it's just been really, you know, I mean, the happiest day in my life. <laughs> so, I mean, to be part of such a great team and to achieve such a great achievement. Oh, well, we're very happy to be able to speak to you about it now. I mean, the conditions on Mars, they make it very difficult, don't they, to get such um, an apparatus airborne. How did you overcome these difficulties? So I mean, I mean, this is had we had to like you know be part of the big team like you know to decide on on a lot of the study how you know that can we fly on another planet I mean especially Mars and we studied like the atmosphere and a lot of this translated down into like the size of the propeller and you know and the, then the, the speed that this propeller is turning and how light the entire aircraft so I mean one of the biggest challenges we had that we had to actually achieve the weight so this is like when I first like joined in the pro in the in the project. I mean, I got tasked with like this very small weight, like few few grams to design a motor inverter to control the motor. And then like we had to design a very light motor to be part of the rotor system. I mean, that's part of the team I worked on. And so, I mean, a lot of that, and this is only like from the weight and the feasibility of flight. And then the other thing come in the environmental aspect, like, you know, the temperature, we had to really design things to work for negative 100 degrees C. I mean, the motor inverter itself will actually live in the Mars atmosphere, unlike a lot of the other electronic live in the warm box. box you see in the bottom, so actually that live in the top order. So, I mean, I had to, this is part of the design design. So we had to do a lot of like 
designing for like negative 100 degrees C, which is very uncommon using electronics we use on Earth. Mm. I mean, we most electronics go negative 40 C. And the same time, we have to consider a lot of the space radiation, the, the vibration from the trip, you know, and a, a lot of other things we had to consider. Mm. Um, and, and the, the flight itself, I mean, it had to be automated, didn't it? Because it's just the, the distance between Earth and Mars is, is 300 million kilometers and you're not, you can't use a joystick uh, to, to do that. And you, you didn't find out about the success of it until, is it three hours later? Yes, I mean, so, I mean, the, the communication take up roughly about 39 min, uh, minutes for the mm. transmission. Uh, the helicopter communicate to a base station on the rover, and the rover talk to, you know, through the DSN system that actually communicate through two satellites around Mars to like few satellites on, on Earth. So, and then by the time they get all the data, especially when you have a, a lot of data, you have to process that thing a little bit longer, longer time, and you have to like decode it. So that's what probably added to the time that took until like we, we got all the informations. Well, it's absolutely extraordinary feat, and it's fantastic to be able to speak to you a little bit about it. Congratulations again, Louis Albasuni. Thank you.